The Honorable Judge Evans presenting. All persons having business before this court come to order. You're supposed to walk. Oh, yeah. um, this is the case, this is the state of California versus Mike Miller. Would you all please rise? <laughs> Okay. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, 
our client, the defendant, Mike Mean, stands here before you and the state as a person wrongfully accused of taking the life of another human being. It is our effort during this trial to prove that he is innocent, and this we will do. We wish to remind the jury at the beginning of, the, of this trial that we, that while our client is being accused of these charges, he remains innocent of them unless he is proven guilty. This means unless you can find any kind of proof saying that he did it, he is innocent. We, the defense, do not have to prove he is innocent. His innocence, he already and presently has that position like I just got saying. Um, we contend that the defendant is absolutely innocent of these charges and that only flimsy, circumstantial, and unusual events that are being interrupted incorrectly to place the defendant in this position. We are very much upset and concerned over the terrible circumstance of the death of the human being, but the fact is the injustice should be excused for another injustice to take place. At the conclusion of this trial, we expect you to find on the facts the defendant remains innocent of these charges, and you will return a verdict not guilty. Thank you. Yeah, I thought she died. Come on, dude. It's not. It's not. Oh. <coughs> She's pretty young. Yeah. <laughs> you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help me out? Mm-hmm. Please take the stand. <laughs> relationship with the victim in this case? She was my daughter. I see. And did you have a good relationship with her? Were you close as a mother and daughter should be? Yes, I am very close relationship. I see. And um, what was your daughter's living situation when you last had contact with her? She lived about 10 miles away from my own home on Hamilton Street. And she had a roommate and a couple friends who lived every once in a while. I see. And she was, in fact, about to come and visit you at your home at the time of her awful disappearance, was she not? Yes, she was. I see. And, um, what first aroused your suspicion that there was something wrong with your daughter? She was supposed to arrive at my house Saturday, December 4th. And Sunday afternoon, I tried contacting her, and I got no response. And then Monday morning, I had a... I had received that call from our employer. Because it wasn't like Candy to not show up for appointments or be late to work, was it? No. Had she ever done that before? No, she hadn't. I see. Um, for the record, what type of blood does your daughter have? She had negative A type, the same type. I see. And isn't it true that less than 5% of people in the population of the world have that type of blood? Correct. I see. Thank you. And, um, do you have any hope of finding your daughter alive? I haven't seen her for several months, so I haven't really given up hope. Thank you. Nothing further, Your Honor. testimony you automatically assume that he sexually abused your daughter if you've never heard of him. Objection, Your Honor. On what grounds? The uh, witness never testified that she thought that her daughter was it's in the sexually testimony. abused. Yes, in the um, statement she made to the police, but not in the testimony of this court. It's the same. Um, Do you believe Mike Lee murdered your daughter? Yes. Yeah. On what basis? I, <laughs> I talked to the police officer and I said that I thought he might have sexually abused her. Did you know Angel Baker, the roommate, well? Not very well, but I knew her. In your opinion, do you think your daughter and Angel are close? Yes. They were living together. Did you ever sense any disagreement between them ever at all? No. Did you know that your daughter was about to 
commercial relationship with my client. No. No other questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Contact the victim's mother. 
because he was heavily drinking. The latter question is redundant. I believe that um, he was heavily drinking that night compared to what he normally does. Heavily drinking is a matter of opinion. Heavily drinking for one year is different than that. As a bartender, are you not supposed to sort of watch your customers to see if you need to cut them off at all? That's right. You can get how much they want. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. What is your occupation, doctor? I'm a pathologist. You're looking at someone who never did very well in science. Could you explain to the court and the jury what a pathologist is? Pathologist determines the cause of death. I see, in crime scenes, correct? Yes. And how did you become involved with the case at hand, the case of the disappearance and alleged murder of Kate Bain? I called him and we found each other for that. I see, and when you got to the crime scene, what were your findings there? Um, two walls of the apartment were basically completely covered in blood. The blood had seeped through the cracks in the floor down to the basement, and there were fruit jars in the basement and speckled with blood. And the blood in the apartment in covers in the two walls in the floor was the same type of blood as was found elsewhere. I see. And what type of blood was that? A negative. Let the record show that A negative is also the same type of blood as the blood of Candy Cane. So you say that the apartment was covered in blood, correct? Yes. Just a huge amount. And can you give me a measurement amount of how much blood that you believe was lost in that apartment? Between four and five pounds. I see. And in your expert opinion, could any human being still be living today after they lost that amount of blood? No. So if Katie Kane was in fact attacked in that apartment, and did in fact lose all of that blood, the same type of blood as hers. Could she still be living today? Thank you. Any questions, John? Okay, so you had just said that if someone who were to lose that much blood, they'd be dead, right? I think so too. I think she's dead, right? I don't know, that's my opinion. <laughs>
what is your profession? I work for the state for a year. I see, and how did do you become involved with the group again? I was on that investigative group. I see, and what were your findings at the group? Um, there was blood on the floors and two of the walls, and the room floor so the blood had seeped through into the basement and had um, pulled into a fruit jar, and there was a hammer with blood stains on it in the kitchen door. I see, and were the um, blood stains on the hammer and the blood all over the um, apartment the same type of blood? And what type of blood was that? Again, let the record show that uh, it was the same blood type as the victim candy cane. I see, and there was a lot of blood? Yes. So much that it had seeped through the floors? Mm -hmm. I see, and um, there was blood on the walls, correct? Yes. Were they consistent with any type of pattern, mm -hmm. such as that would give us a clue as to how the victim was killed? Or um, it was splattered on the walls, which meaning that she was probably hit violently on the back of the head. Hit violently on the back of the head with a hammer. I see. Now that's the way to die. Nothing further. I'd like to ask a question now. Okay. What is your name again? Sorry about that. Okay, that's fine. Um, the prosecution had asked, you know, where the blood stains were, and you had mentioned great glitch. But did she mention about she mentioned about the hammer, right? Mm -hmm. But did you find any fingerprints whatsoever on that hammer? Mm -hmm. So that means there's none of the defendant on that hammer. No mm -hmm. fingerprints of him at all. Mm -hmm. What about in the apartment, just in case? Because he had to open the door to get in there to kill her, obviously. No fingerprints. Absolutely none, right? Okay, just getting that clear. No fingerprints. Okay. <laughs> Um, you would also search for the camp, correct? I don't know if she touched on the camper very much, but um, they had said in one of the testimonies that my defendant had cleaned out his camper from top to bottom, scrubbed it, soaked everything the day after. And I know a lot of people are thinking, oh, he might have killed her in there, or put the blood in there, but um, were there any blood stains mm -hmm. in the camper? Okay, this will be important for you, I don't know. Um, and then, what about this picture? There was a picture sitting in the dresser. There was. Okay, and we had mentioned earlier um, about Angel Baker. She said that they had gotten close and were seeing each other, so that would result in a picture, correct? Because I get to see the people that I'm seeing too, so it's just two way street there. Um, but what about the other evidence? Did you find any other sort of evidence at all that would? in my client as the murderer of Kingston? None. Ready? Okay, so let me tell you guys, there's no evidence from the State Crime Bureau of any sort of murderous crime by my client. Any evidence? Well, you were about thinking like that there were no fingerprints of your of their clients on the hammer. Um, the uh, crime happened in December, correct? It's cold outside in December, correct? Yes. How easy would it have been for the defendant to wear gloves during the death in order to cover his tracks and there would be no fingerprints? Yeah. So just let the record show that that's Happened. And also, um, they also pointed out that the camper trailer had been scrubbed down recently after the alleged murder, correct? Yes. That also could have been done to cover his tracks. I mean, once you get blood on your camper trailer, you don't usually just leave it there for the police to find, do you? No. Thank you. Nothing further on. Mm -hmm. Can I ask questions? Yes, John. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, this is Stern. 
Okay. Like she has said, you know, it is possible that it took a lot of time to walk out of his apartment into the hallway and across the hallway where it's still heated, right? That's perfectly possible. Correct. Correct. But would you do it? Walking across the hallway, yeah, I'm going to be cold. I'm going to put gloves on. No. Okay, that's two people. <laughs> <laughs> and um, as far as the camper being dirty, um, I had been told that it was hunting season, because December, you know, hunting season was the month before, even a little bit in that month. So if there were blood stains and everything, that which there wasn't, and it was clean top and bottom, which it was, it could have been just because it was dirty, correct? Oh, Steve. 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 Oh,